It's 4 a.m. Before the horizon fills with light and I am filled with dread, a thousand little bits of worry and fear. Do you have a child? Look at them. Look in their eyes. What do you see? Light, hope, brightness, wonder, excitement, peace. God, the peace. I never noticed the peace before, and now I miss it. Now I would do whatever it takes to place the peace back in his eyes, his heart. As a young child, wobbly-legged and attempting to perfect his walking, I kissed many of his bumps and bruises, hoping to soothe his pain and calm his fear. But that pain was fleeting. Perhaps it was preparation in small, manageable doses, training for these much harder days to come, when his bumps and bruises turn into crippling emotions and cracked esteem. The wounds are deeper now and never seem to heal. Sometimes the pain subsides, or seems to anyway. I always worry and wonder, is it really gone, or is it just buried so deep under the facade of normalcy that we don't see it? This last time we made it six weeks, almost seven. No major depressive episodes, which makes it sound so sterile, unemotional. Yet the episodes are nothing but emotion. Like a pot of water boiling over, the pain and sadness erupt with no place to go. He holds on and holds them in as long as possible. I was hopeful. Maybe this time we'd found the magic pill, the magic dosage, magic mix of therapy, medication, and support. It was good while it lasted, a brief respite for my mind and body. Then I got a call from the school office. How fast can you get here, she asked. Six minutes later, I'm walking into the school. His case manager meets me at the door, and as we walk to the safe room, they're holding him in, she begins to tell me about the steady unraveling of his day. In that precise moment, the details were important. Really, they still are, because the details provide information pertinent to his doctors. But sitting here now, thinking of yesterday afternoon, those details seem muddled, hushed, muted in a way. Just a layering of random undertones compared to what came next, when she said with a shaking voice. And then I walked back into the room, his gray shirt tied around his neck, his face was so red. He was strangling himself with his shirt, struggling for air. This is why the previous details seem less important now. Like a faded memory, because this is what's imprinted on my brain, a visual of my son trying to strangle himself. As we stand outside the safe room, fear falls upon me. settles in my head, in my heart. Tears fill the corner of my eyes. There is noise, kids around me. Teachers in the hall, it's near the end of the school day. Kids are walking by laughing, smiling. Seems like they're in fast forward while I stand there, paused in a tunnel, stuck in time while the world hastily revolves around me. She opens the door. He's lying on the floor, face down, under a giant beanbag, crying, pouring his sadness into the ground in which he lies. Hey, buddy, I softly whisper. Go away, go away, I want to be left alone. And then the gentle dance starts between us, me trying to honor his needs while ensuring his safety. We spent time in silence and sometimes sharing words. A mother's first instinct is to wrap her arms around her child when he's hurting. And I desperately wanted to reach out and hold him. But in this fragile state, it isn't always what he's ready for. It took about 30 minutes to get him to a place in which he was ready to go home, ready to make safe choices. We can't rush this, you see. The car is a dangerous place when in the middle of an emotional breakdown. The rest of the evening was a rebuilding of sorts. 
After he sheds the amount of emotion he does in these episodes, it is a slow build back to a sense of normalcy. His energy is low. If we're lucky, we may see a smile. But mostly we see a kind of bland existence, one in which he's just thankful he's made it through another day. I, on the other hand, now feel the slow build of emotion in myself because the previous several hours have been about being steady and strong for him. Holding emotion in when I can because my sadness sends him deeper into the darkness. He feels and finds fault in himself for causing that. Late at night when the house is quiet, his mind resting, his heart holding steady, this is when he seems with peace. And that is when I let go. Eventually the tiredness overwhelms me and I drift off to sleep, my eyes dried of tears. Before the horizon fills with light and I am filled with dread, a thousand little bits of worry and fear.